allegation by the Indian media is that Zakir denigrates other religions, quote sort of context, abuses all non-Muslim religion. Let's suppose, like I am a Christian, let's suppose Bible is wrong. For the sake of an argument, Bible is wrong. Right? My beliefs are wrong. Now, why do I find that Muslims in particular have to degrade other religions just to feel superior? And it's a very good question. We are not allowed to insult a non-Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 108, Revile not those who they worship God besides Allah, lest in their ignorance they will revile Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not supposed to insult or degrade any other God which they are worshipping. To say that I denigrate other religions and abuse non-Muslim religion is a blatant lie. Point out a single statement of mine which denigrates or abuses other religions. And if I do that, it will be against the Quran. And Quran clearly states that in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse 108, that abuse not those gods who they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lest in their ignorance they will abuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So abusing gods of other religions and abusing other religions is prohibited in the Quran and I have never done that. The allegation that I quote out of context, bring me the quotation and give me the context. That's the reason. After every lecture of mine, we give time for question answer session. And the time given for question answer session is much longer than my talk. So if anyone disagrees or wants any clarification, he is most welcome to ask. Hardly, rarely do we have after religious talks, the preacher giving opportunity for the public to have an open question answer session. And that's what I do. And that's the reason that people agree that I'm a logical person. I give them a chance to differ. And I give the reason if they have misunderstood me. Yes, there are also allegations in the Indian media that says, that Zakir says, Islam is the best religion. He believes, he is a person who believes in supremacy. And I do agree that Islam is the best religion because this is a verse of the Quran in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, which says, in Nadina in the light of Islam. The only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. Quran is very clear that the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. Quran says in Surah Imran chapter number 3, verse number 25, that if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, it will never be accepted of him, and on the day of judgment, he'll be amongst the losers. Quran is the only religious book which makes it unequivocal, unambiguous that Islam is the only correct religion. I am a student of compassionate religion. I have read the Bible, I have read the Veda, I have read the Rama, the Bhagavad Gita. In no other religious scripture besides the Quran has it been mentioned unequivocally, unambiguously that their religion is only correct. And if Quran says that and I believe in it, I have a right. It is the right given to me in the Indian constitution. And if I say that Islam is the best religion, I am not breaking any law of the constitution. If a Hindu says that Hindu is the best, he has the right to say that. If a Christian says that Christianity is the best, he has the right to say that. That's a different question. He will not be able to prove it from his Bible or from his Veda. What I do, I give references. So by saying that Islam is the best religion, I am not at all degrading any other religion, nor am I abusing them. I have a beautiful formula which I say to all human beings which no logical human being would disagree to. I tell them, agree that at least one book in the world is 100% the word of God. The Hindu would say, I would in mind believing that the Veda is the word of God. The Christian would say, I would in mind believing that the Bible is the word of God. And the Muslim will say, I would in mind believing that the Quran is the word of God. So I tell them, let us get together and agree to follow what is common in all these scriptures. So when you take out the common matter in all the scriptures, then no one would disagree. What is common, we agree to follow 100%. What is not common, we will discuss tomorrow, whether right or wrong. So let us agree to follow 100% what is mentioned in all the religious scriptures. This is a common logic about the Venn diagram and when we do a research we come to know 
that all the major religions of the world in their scriptures, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Judaism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Islam, they say that we should follow only one God who has got no images and he alone should be worshipped. So let us agree to believe in one God. All the scriptures, whether it be the Veda, whether it be the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, as well as the Quran, they say that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So why don't we agree to follow Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him? All the scriptures say, whether it be the Veda, whether it be the Bible, whether it be the Quran, that when we want to pray to Almighty God, you have to put your forehead on the ground. That the way we pray, whether in the Bible, whether in the Veda, whether it's mentioned in the Quran. So let's pray in that way. All the scriptures say that there is heaven and hell. All the scriptures, they say that you should not have alcohol. All the scriptures say that you should not gamble. All the scriptures say that you should not have pork. So when I'm taking out the commonalities and when I'm telling let's follow what is common, what is different we'll discuss tomorrow, right or wrong, where am I spreading hatred? I'm trying to get all the human beings of different religions together on one common platform only saying that we submit our will to Almighty God. What am I telling them? Follow your scripture. At least what is common let us follow it 100%. What is not common we'll discuss tomorrow. I am only telling all the human beings to come closer and follow the commandment of Almighty God and be good human beings. From the time of the Prophet وسلم, about a woman who was married in his time and had committed adultery with a man and she came to the Prophet وسلم, she came to the Prophet وسلم, and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I am a woman who has committed zina and I am married muhsana and I am now pregnant from zina Ya Rasulullah, fatahirni, bring purity to me as Allah has ordained in capital punishment in the Quran.